Welcome to Sequel Tidbits, where we give you just a tidbit to keep you coming back. So we're going to start out today by just giving you a quick overview of SQL Server Management Studio. This is the 2012 version. Uh, when you first come up, it's going to want to connect to a server. Obviously, uh, if you didn't know this, you can connect to the database engine, the analysis services engine, the reporting services, or the integration services. You can manage all four of those to different degrees. Some of those not so much, but primarily we're going to work with the database engine. We'll get into some of the other options there. I'm going to connect to the instance that I have on my machine. Uh, this is the machine, this first portion here. And the slash uh, indicates the instance name. So you may just have local host, or you may have just a server name, or you may be using an IP address. There's a lot of ways to actually connect to a SQL server through TCP IP because these names will ultimately resolve to an IP address, or in this case, we're not using TCP IP, we're using shared memory, but I'll show you that a little later. In this case, I could use uh, Windows authentication. So however I'm logged into the particular machine that I'm accessing it from will be how I will authenticate to the SQL instance. Or in this case, I'm using a SQL user and it's the tidbits user. And then I've got my password pre-saved in there. You do have a couple of options before you click connect that you can actually type in here if I wanted to connect to a specific database and such. These are things that you, these are little tidbits that you do need to know. For example, if you ever get your default database gets uh, messed up, you won't be able to log in because by default it'll be trying to connect to a database that doesn't exist or is not accessible. And you need to go in here and actually browse to the various databases that are on here and, and pick the database that you want to or type it in if you know the name that you want to connect to. Most of these other things you're not going to need to go ahead and, and mess with but I do want to point out that the connect to database is something that I do occasionally have to tweak just based on um, if, if something's actually gone wrong in the server and I need to get on in a quick manner. But basically here are the um, here's how it would normally look and you just simply click connect or you'll enter your credentials and click connect. Once you connect you're going to go ahead and have the uh, connection over here in Object Explorer. If you don't see the Object Explorer, you can go up to here and click Object Explorer. You can also, if you're into working with a lot of servers, you can pull up the registered servers, which I like to go ahead and you can kind of dock above it. And then you have the ability to uh, see your registered servers. Here's my registered server. and that way, if I disconnect from this server, I can just simply double click it and it'll reconnect down here. So notice this is to connect to an additional server if I wanted to. I can disconnect here and uh, refresh the different things that I have. I could also connect to a different type of instance, uh, whether it's a database analysis service, integration or reporting services. So there's a lot of neat features to explore and, and find. From here, what we're going to want to really be able to do is understand what the purpose of this main window is for. So that's generally going to be for your query window. So I'm going to hit New Query, and that's going to bring, bring up this window, and it also brings up the Properties window. If you don't like that, you can, of course, hide it or close it all together. Uh, if, you, if you push F4, it brings it right back. And if you don't know where to find the Properties window, you can kind of go over here to the View and start to find the windows. Some of them are right here at the top. Some of them you have to actually go into other windows or dig a little deeper to find it. Here's the properties window here, F4, that you can see. Another window that you, you may want to have is the Object Explorer Details. The nice thing about the Object Explorer Details is that while in the Object Explorer, I can click on one thing at a time and sort of connect to them and, and work with these objects. For example, if I wanted to uh, do something with the master database here, when I'm in Object Explorer Details, however, I can actually multi-select things. So that's one feature that, for whatever reason, you can only get in the Object Explorer Details. I Notice I cannot multi-select over here in the Object Explorer. However, when I'm in the Details, I can multi-select, Shift-Select. So I just would click on one, hold down Shift, click on the other, or hit sh uh, click, Control-click. We'll select two different ones, and then there are are various things that I could potentially do 
to multiple tables at a time or multiple databases at a time, depending on what I'm trying to work with here. So that's the Object Explorer details. The other thing that I like about the Object Explorer details is some of the properties that you can immediately see about these databases. So you can see uh, things like the last time it was backed up, the file path, the date it was created, who owns it, things like that, without actually having to open up the properties, right-click on the database and click Properties, and go in, and then sometimes you actually have to dig through multiple tabs before you find what you're looking for. So we'll go into some of these uh, things in a little more detail. I just want to give you a quick lay of the land of what's going on here. So mainly, here's your query window. If I was to simply say select star from sys databases, hit F5, we'll run, or just click on the execute button up here, F5. Notice I have kind of this split pane between the, uh, the actual query and then I get the, the results and any messages that I would get down here. If I don't want to see that or I want to toggle this on and off, I can hit Control R and that hides the results window. Control R brings it right back. So if you're developing a query and I want as much screen real estate as possible, hit Control R to, to make that disappear. Hit Control R to bring it back if, if I want to see it. Also, it'll come back if I rerun the query and sh it'll show the new query. You, you can, of course, also do things like splitting the window. So if you had, you wanted to have this split so you could look at two different portions. Uh, this portion could be scrolled down and I could be looking at something higher or lower just depending on where I'm at. I'm at. Scrolled down here and scrolled all the way up to the top, two different portions of the query. And of course, as you can see, I can still run from either. So that's that's kind of the split thing. You can, of course, also you can split multiple directions. So there's a lot of things you can play with and new things you can figure out to do to maximize your screen real estate and figure out how you like it in the 2012 environment. Another thing I like to point out is the the different ways that you can script things. You can, by default, you're going to be scripting to the grid. You can also script it to text, or not script it to text, but show the results in text. So if I was to run this now that I've changed it to text, notice it actually gives me a text-based version, which is handy sometimes if I'm creating other scripts or things that I actually want to be able to copy without it being in column format. If I want to actually do print statements or generate some kind of thing. When you do that, notice I get basically the messages, this four rows affected used to be on the messages tab. So I'm getting the results tab and the messages tab all in one uh, query window. If I don't want to see the four rows affected, I can simply set no count on and that's going to eliminate that extra row of detail. Sometimes you want to do that in your queries and your applications if they can't accept or understand what that row count is that's coming back as part of the result set. Another thing I'll point out right away uh, is just that as you're working with writing queries, many times, uh, if I'm just going to drill, and I don't have any user databases at this moment, I just this is a fresh install, so I'm just going to go into the MSDB and look at some of the uh, system tables here, and you know, say I was working with uh, backup files, and it has all these columns, but I don't want to type those columns, so I can literally what I can do if 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 I was going to instead of saying select star from the backup file, I can first of all I can drag over the table so I don't have to type that. I literally clicked it and dragged it right over. I can do the same thing with the columns. I can click on the column if I want a specific column, I can drag that over. Or if I want every single column, I can literally drag the columns folder and notice it puts it in a comma delimited format so that I can now execute the query. Uh, of course I'm in the wrong database at this point. Let's switch to MSDB and run that query again. And let's switch it back to the, the uh, grid view so you can kind of see that it's bringing back all the columns. And then at that point, if I wanted to, I could uh, take out some of the columns if I didn't need them. So just understand that these panes uh, interact with one another. Um, I give you another example of that. Say that I was disconnected from this in Object Explorer. I can simply right click on the query window Notice this query window is showing that I am connected to my server in the curious instance. And if I right click on it, I can say, open this server connection in Object Explorer, and it's going to open it up over here. Just by the same token that I was able to click on something over here and say new query, 
and that opens a, a window over here. So once you begin to learn these little shortcuts, you really start to become very good at interacting in this environment. Okay, well that's going to be all for today. Just wanted to give you a quick lay of the land of how some of the windows work in Management Studio. Until next time, uh, this is SQL Tidbits, where we give you just a tidbit to keep you coming back.